Hey, this is Swoopy. Welcome to Whimsicality, a weekly dose of critical thinking served with a tasty dollop of fluff on top. They say blondes have more fun. Um, I wouldn't really know. I'm not one. My hair is dark, and I dye it even darker. Genetics made my skin and hair the color that they are. Although, at a baser level, my parents' hormones are the most responsible, and my parents' parents... Okay, before I end up in a spin relative to a double helix, I better get back on target. The sacred white buffalo. No, seriously. And actually, it's not buffalo either. It's bison, or bison americanus. You know, Tatanka. In the same way that we call sweet potatoes yams, Americans have gotten into the habit of calling bison buffalo. So, bison, okay? Buffalo are like water buffalo, and we don't have those. And sweet potatoes, okay? Yams are African tubers that can be up to 100 pounds. Sweet potatoes are in the morning glory family and rarely get more than a pound or two. So, back to my hair. It's dark because the dominant genetic alleles from my father and mother added up to dark hair. Had there been fewer eumelanin genes, my hair could have been lighter, but it wasn't. My sister's hair is about the same color as mine, but not quite the same shade. Her son, my nephew, same thing. My mom dyes her hair, but when she was younger, her hair was closer to the color of mine than it is to my sister's. In fact, my mom dyed her hair black when she was a young adult, just like I do. I only just remembered that, which is kind of freaky. Although I would suspect that black hair as fashion, a la Elizabeth Taylor, was in vogue for a completely different reason back then. For nearly all intents and purposes, when something has a dark color, for some reason we perceive it as more mysterious, like shadows on the wall. We call them shadow puppets, not light puppets. Then again, the ability to create shadow is far easier than to create light. Plus, the thing about darkness is that it's dark. But making blonde hair? Harder than making black hair, trust me. It takes 20 minutes and a little Clairol number 36 to make my hair so black that a lot of cash, a lot of bleach, and a lot of crying just cannot change it back. I speak from experience. Blondes, however, it helps if your hair is light to start with, hasn't been processed a billion times. You have some aluminum foil handy and a lot of patience. Only my most virgin of hairs, at the roots where there's new growth, perverts, have I ever been able to achieve a state of glowy pure blondness. Yes, being blonde even just at the roots made me feel different. I felt weird, and I probably looked weird too. It didn't take long for me to return to a place of comfort and familiarity back to my dark roots. But anyway, about the buffalo, or bison. The bison americanus came in many earth tones to blend with even the most discriminating of prairies. Well, okay, not green, mostly brown. Although every once in a while nature hiccups and a white bison is born. Now, there are blonde babies born all the time. Some of them even stay blonde. Some of them end up being Paris Hilton. We don't go into a media frenzy of adulation and sap when that happens. Well, again, I don't know about Paris Hilton, and we're not going to talk about her anymore. Among Native Americans, there is a legend that the white buffalo is a symbol of peace and hope. In my reading, I found the birth of a white buffalo compared to the birth of Christ. In truth, it's more comparable to the reincarnation of a spiritual llama, as in the Buddhist kind, not the alpaca kind. So the story goes, two young Sioux warriors were sent by their chief to hunt for game. They climbed a high hill to survey the land, and as they stood there, a vision of a beautiful woman floated before them. Needless to say, they were pretty jazzed. She was dressed in white leather, just like Pinky Tuscadero. And although both men were awed by her beauty, only one of them was bold enough to touch her. This was apparently a mistake, because sacred white leather maiden rose a cloud of dust around the warrior, and as quick as you can say sexual harassment, he was reduced to only his bones. So then maybe white isn't the color of sweetness and light after all. Well, no. In the end, the sacred woman praised the more chaste of the warriors and visited his village, where she taught all of the things that we non-native to North America-born peoples associate as virtues of the natives, Americans, Indians, original Americans. If you believe the tale, actually, I would suspect buffalo people would be appropriate, or um, bison people. The peoples who are indigenous to this continent, pre-European invading, land amassing, disease spreading, well, whatever. The buffalo woman, a uh, bison woman, told the tribe that they were from Mother Earth and gave them the gift of the sacred pipe, the stem of which represents all that grows on Earth, and when used, it creates a bridge reaching into the sky, 
making a circle that encompasses all living things. Also, that the pipe is a holy object, in the making of which both men and women have a hand, and that is what binds men and women together. After her many teachings in the ways of earth, nature, sex, drugs, etc., White Bison Woman took leave of her people, saying she would see them again. And as she walked away, she stopped and rolled over four times. The first time she rolled over, she became a black buffalo, then a brown one, then a red one, and the last time, a white buffalo uh, bison calf. This is the tale that has created the lore of the white bison calf, as well as the symbolic nature of the, quote, peace pipe, which is supposedly still in possession of tribes in a sacred place in South Dakota to this day. This is proof that the necessity to fabricate elaborate tales in order to justify science crosses the boundaries of nearly all cultures, and also that the belief in even the most improbable of things can endure beyond what science can prove. We know what causes a white bison just as much as we know what causes blonde people. Bleach. No. Genetics. The rarity of white bison in the past was directly related to the sheer lack of numbers of bison overall. If you are bison, the odds of a genetic color mutation are much rarer. Now that the number of American bison continues to increase, the number of white bison will too, and have been, because genetics works. The American Bison Association reports that there are over 400,000 bison in the United States. The odds of a white calf are often reported as 1 in 10 million, but given that there are reported births every few years, the odds are more believable at around 1 in 200,000. The most recent white bison birth was in Fort St. John, Canada on April 17th of this year. The owners of the Blatt's Bison Ranch, where the new calf, named Spirit of Peace, was born, were surprised by the birth and believe it is a one-in-million event. They aren't above the idea of selling Spirit of Peace to the Native Americans or a circus or a zoo to give the animal, quote, more exposure. I, too, believe that the Spirit of Peace needs more exposure, and that someone blessed with what some cultures believe is a sacred symbol would be willing to sell it for that purpose sort of sums it all up. What is it about white animals, anyway? White bears, white elephants, white rhinos, the great white shark. Even Alice chased that damned white rabbit around and made a point of saying he was white. But then again, the white rabbit in the Jefferson Airplane song? Something completely different. Grace Slick had black hair back then, didn't she? Why all the mysticism surrounding things that are the color that they are, simply because nature and science made them that way? I don't know. White glowy things will always be sacred, like marshmallows in the Pope's hat. And why is it that there are a million white sheep and the birth of a black one makes it the odd sheep out? Why is it when a black cat crosses your path it's bad luck? And what's the deal with penguins anyway? Does the inherent hue of something that is purely the happenstance of how your genetic tinker toys get put together really color your future or indicate your propensity for goodness or not so goodness? Of course not. Although I can say from personal experience that black cats and women with black hair are never to be trusted. This has been Skepticality. You can send us feedback by email at feedback at skepticality.com or by phone at any time. Area code 206-888-HOAX. Again, that's area code 206-888-4629. From Bat Big Studios in Atlanta, Georgia, this has been Skepticality. Skepticality.